do this visualization right now. Close your eyes. And I just want you to, again, just picture your 10 out of 10. Like, what does she look like? Just, it's like, build a, build a bitch workshop. <laughs> what does she look like? Just customize her however you want. First of all, just make her sexy as fuck. That she's got the physique, the face, the hair. That if you were just talking to her, your dick would get hard. Also add in the personality. She's so cute. She buys you gifts and everything. She's like snuggling up to you. She's got like literally the perfect woman. We're just building her up in our mind. She's so high quality that of course other guys want her. We've already discussed that your future wife, this high quality, beautiful girl, there's sheer competition that I want her. If she's as high quality as you visualize, I want her as well. Bro, me and my fucking boys want her. Everyone you look up to on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. If your future wife is as high quality as you say, all of these boys want her. That's why the competition for men is fucking crazy these days. You know, I have been in this space much longer than you, like this space of masculinity, self-improvement, weightlifting. 10 years ago, when I used to read into this space, the figures that the older guys would recommend, they would say, the top 20% of guys get all the girls. That used to be the phrase, you've got to get into the top 20% of men. These days, what percentage do like influencers and people online make guides to get into? The top 1%. That's like the new phrase that people use. The top 1% man. It's gotten metaphorically 20 times more competitive. And why? You Honestly, you might want to be pissed off at me. The reason why it's gotten more competitive, not less, is because of people like me. Because 10 years ago, a guy going to the gym and building muscle to look good, it was honestly more of a rare thing. Like, I was the only kid who was young in the gym those days. Now, when I go to the gym, there's so many, like, young chads in there. There's so many young teenagers in there. And it's because of people like me, because of people like Andrew Tate, guys who are basically spilling the secrets to young men and telling them the things they need to do to develop right. Getting into business, martial arts, weightlifting, confidence, speaking to girls, being, being like having a, a great character, being respectful. We're spilling the secrets and more and more guys are, are learning and getting into this. So this is what the competition looks like. It is. You're basically a complete and utter fucking idiot if you're not in the top 20% of men these days. If you're not in the, like the top eight, like let's say 80% of men are completely and utterly just losers. They live quiet lives of desperation but the the reason why i'm not sad for them is because they don't even try and change they're fine with coming home from a shit job that they don't even like they've got a crush on that like four out of ten girl in their office space that they actually say is more like an eight just because they haven't even seen prettier girls recently they come home get their little shitty seed oil carb filled processed food meal ready and then they watch some tv shows and they complain about like the cost of living crisis. That's like the average man, that's 80% of men. Or if they're younger, 80% of guys, like the losers who can't even, like literally can't even speak to girls or guys, like the guys in high school, this is probably you. Guys in high school who can't even speak to other human beings are just so fragile. Like I could, we could, I could snap their fucking arm just with mine. I could just do like grab them and just do that and I'll snap your fucking elbow. They just look like, like so fucking wimpy, no, so low testosterone and so low on the social hierarchy. This is 80% of guys. Now, if you're in that group and you're getting pissed off, like, oh, you know, Hamza said he'd snap my elbows, but you're working on it, then you've got my respect. Then you're already in the top 20% of men the way I see it. The bottom 80%, 80% of men are just fine with being complacent. But about 20% of men aren't. And this is where it gets interesting. Because when you go into the gym today, what do you actually see? It's not how it used to be a few years ago if you used to go to the gym, like, you know, back in 2015 or some shit. When I go into the gym, every single time, there are at least two other guys who are in insane shape, who are young, who are making money. At least. And you know what's interesting? I go to the gym at like the least popular time. Like, like I go to the gym at like 9, 10 a.m. when all the 9 to 5 rats are all in work and everything. If I went at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., when most people are there, you'd start to see, like, you know, like, guys who are in careers and stuff, but they make fairly decent money. And they've all got six-packs. When you get to a certain level, having a six-pack isn't special anymore. Making a fuck ton of money isn't special anymore. It's really not. Every guy who dates the kind of girls that, like, I'm interested in has got money, clout, 
and a great physique and confidence and recognition and is more like an alpha male in his own tribe. The competition is fierce, not for the losers, but for the winners. So once you're in this group of guys who are basically grinding hard, you've been trying to make money online, you've been going to the gym and building muscle, you've been studying harder than ever, you've been cleaning up your diet, you've already beaten most guys who are just completely and utterly brain dead. But there's now a new tier of men that you have to compete against. And I'm telling you right now, bro, these men are doing everything right. So if you think to yourself like, oh, well, you know, I'm not fat, so that's great. No, no, no. That little piece of chocolate you eat today will mean the difference between you and the other guy. When you come home and it's at the end of a hard work day and, you know, you've had school and the gym and you just want to relax for an hour. There's a guy on your level who's not going to relax for an hour. He's going to read a book instead. Where are you both going to be one year from now? You can cope all you want and say, well, I'll be a billionaire. Well, no, 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 because it's cause and effect. He's, there's another guy who's, who has the same kind of day as you. He goes to school, he does whatever, the same kind of day. He doesn't have that final one hour to relax. He just reads an educational book. He works for an extra hour. He, he socializes and improves his social skills for an extra hour. One year from now, he'll look completely different to you. He'll be the one with the popular chad next to the girls, whilst you'll still feel like a fucking loser. That one change, just one hour a day, at the end of all of the productive stuff, that's how he's going to compete and actually beat you. And you might think, oh, well, it's not worth the effort and stuff. You know what the, what's at the end of this race. You know it. The reason why men compete so hard is because we compete for resources, power, and for sex. So you might think, oh, well, you know, is, is the grass, like, is the juice worth the squeeze? I, you know, I'm just going to grind all my life. The reason why men work hard is because we know that at the end of our hard work, a better woman is there. The woman that you can get right now after just doing a few months of self-improvement is usually like a three or a four out of ten. But every six months that you grind hard as fuck and you beat the other guys who are slacking a little bit, you start increasing the quality of woman. And that's the, one of the most important things you can do because that woman is going to raise your children and, and your children will learn a lot from her. So you'd want her to be as high quality as possible. And of course, you're going to be fucking with her. You're going to be with her and spending time with her. This shouldn't make you feel upset thinking, oh man, I'm, I'm going to have to give up my TV show. I'm going to have to give up my sweeties. It should make you feel op opportunistic that you're looking out for those places, those pockets, those windows of opportunity that you can get another 1% to 5% of a boost in. That's what you should be looking out for. It's fucking brutal how serious the competition is these days. Especially if you look online as well. When I was in high school, when I was younger, it wasn't really a thing. Like, you know, once we all turned 16, 17, 18, it wasn't a thing for like got rich guys in other countries to message the girls from our high school. Like I never really heard it. I remember it happened to like one girl and that was like a special thing that she got flown out to Dubai and like people talked about it and everything. But that was it. These days, if you're in 18 years old right now, you're in university, that pretty girl that is like, you know, the really beautiful girl who's got a nice Instagram page in your, your class, she's already been flown out to like three different destinations. Now, she's definitely a hoe, fair enough. But this is also like those same offers are happening to girls who are actually quite high quality, reserved and like, like wife quality. There's rich guys out there who literally for the first date can fly a girl to a different country because it doesn't make a difference in their bank accounts. And you think you're going to compete because, oh, well, you're grinding, you're on self-improvement and you meditate. Bro, the rich guy meditates these days. Think about that. The fucking rich guy, it, our image of the rich guy used to be like, oh, he's rich, but he's fat and depressed. These days, the rich guy is jacked and meditates and does breath work and knows how to fuck properly. Like that, that's the competition that you're up against. It's like spirit guys who have, who have tapped into spirituality, who have taken psychedelics, ayahuasca, who know how to like fucking penetrate a woman into, into like, into light. It's guys who make a fuck ton of money, who never have to worry about it at all, who drive like fancy cars. And it's not about the car, but it's about how they feel and their self image inside of it, which is so hot to a girl. 
So if you think you're standing out by just being on self-improvement and just like going to the gym, bro, that's the bare minimum to not be part of like the retard group of 80% of men. That's the bare minimum. If you're just going to the gym, trying to study hard, trying to start a business, but you keep switching business model to business model because Iman said to do agency, Hamza saying YouTube, copywriting looks cool as well. You're still in the fucking 80%. The competition's ruthless. These days, you don't get that opportunity to take a few hours off to rest and unwind because the, the top tier men, the, the guys in the 20%, 10%, 1%, they're not doing this rest and unwind bullshit. They're just working super fucking hard. Their rest and unwind is time which is social with friends or with girls. That's like the, the sort of time off that I've seen that these like highest tier men have that develops them, that challenges them. It's still social, they get content of it, so it's still work, it's still profitable. Like if I go on a date with a girl, I take one picture. That picture's made me like five grand, easily. Because I post that picture, more people will buy my programs. I've just profited from it. The top tier men are literally in this like work, make money mode all day long, but they actually, in a weird way, me stepping into that recently, it's actually so much more enjoyable than usual. When you have a certain kind of brain as a guy and you're just like not supposed to be a fucking loser, being in this hyper productive state that other people say is like toxic productivity, hustle culture. I'm now realizing like why so many masculine men are in the hustle culture because it feels fucking amazing when you have like a certain drive, a competition and testosterone like a man and you're in this like work all day mode. Even when you go on a date with a girl, you see it as work because you know that if you get like content of it, it's done. I go to the gym, I get a little bit of content of me shirtless training. That's made me thousands of dollars. And so I'm in that mode all day, every day, whilst you're like, you know, finishing up 6, 7 p.m. and you're about to like unwind or at least you might not be doing that right now, but you spent most of your life coming back from school, whatever obligation you had, and spending hours on video games, which allowed other men to surpass you. And it is fucking hard right now. Like, I understand if you feel bad. It is so fucking hard. If you're wondering, like, you know, it's so hard to attract a girl these days, like the girl that you're into, who's literally, let's be honest, she's like a five or a six. She's still getting fucked by like an, an eight or a nine out of 10 guy these days. She's still getting messaged and DM'd and, and Tinder matches with guys who are absolute chads who have got the full package. So you only have two options. Either you drop out of the sexual marketplace and you wait up until there's sex robots and you go buy yourself a flashlight in the meantime and fuck up your self image and disrespect your ancestors and you click off my videos and you never fucking watch again because you smell bad and I don't want you anywhere near me. You drop out of the competition entirely and become one of those weird creepy guys in like Korea or Japan who have like a pillow as a girlfriend instead. If that's what you want, go ahead, fuck right off, pussy. But if you're gonna be in this competition, you fucking destroy it. There is no alternatives. You don't get to be in this competition and half ass it and be fine with like a five out of 10 lifestyle. If you're going to stay in this competition, you fucking grind like a dog. You work like an immigrant. You do all of the things. You don't take this cute little time off to like, you know, just sit there in your dark room to watch a TV show, to play one hour of video games with your fucking loser friends that you don't even like that are disrespectful. You grind like fucking crazy and create the life that you've actually wanted. And what you'll realize is all these motherfuckers who are talking about the hustle culture grind being toxic they're actually fucking wrong it's actually nice to be a guy who works hard as fuck there's only two options it's not worth being in the competition but being bad at it so you need to choose right now if you want to get women at some point in your life if you want to be around women have sex you want to have children you will win this competition there's no alternative and if you really are thinking you know what it's not worth it drop out completely. Don't do this bullshit where you're still trying to like, you know, still trying kind of half ass, but you're getting the worst of girls. They're not even being nice to you. You haven't kissed a girl in like a year. You're maybe still a virgin, but you're completely struggling. And you, every day you're doubting yourself. It's better if you just drop out completely and just, and adopt your new identity as like a, a fucking goblin new age weirdo who like fucks VR porn or something. That's honestly better than struggling in, in the dating market these days. Honestly, even though I'm insulting it, it's better if you become like a guy who just gets prostitutes all the time or a guy who just like has fucking weird sex toys like that you can just like fap with. It's way better to honestly do be that than to be like a five out of 10 guy who's struggling with dating girls because you're so low quality. You can't stay in the middle. You either go to zero 
4 out of 10 and be a complete fucking loser. Or you push for 10 out of 10. Not 8, not 9, but 10. You live to your potential. The smallest things where you're starting to question the milk that you put into your coffee, knowing that it's a little bit estrogenic and it's got weird lactose sugar inside and it's not good for you. I want you fucking sober. I want you optimizing the smallest parts of your life and you don't have time for this one hour, two hour, three hour bullshit. Just sat there in silence. Now, if you want to have a social event where you guys watch a movie together, that's fine. If you want to meet a girl and she wants to watch a movie, okay, fine. But you being sat there, like you are in grind mode. This is this is like the real masculine self-improvement that I've I've now stepped into. Because that cute stuff I was doing before, like, you know, meditate and sit around journaling about your feelings. That's really nice. And it's great to get like a foundation of that. But when you get to a certain point, it's not enough anymore. I, I had this in 2023. I was just kind of like sat around just like meditating and still journaling. And I was like, there's more to my fucking life. There's like, there's a mission that you could have where you could help thousands of people. You, and you certainly need to help yourself first. You certainly need self-improvement for like the level one things, level two things. But at a certain point, it changes from self-improvement to just having a fucking mission, like a fucking movement that you're trying to like work really hard on. At first, you're just trying to improve yourself. Then you're trying to improve the fucking world. That's the, the point I wanna get you to because when you're at that point, you are so much more disciplined. You're so much more of a productive member of society where you're helping other people. You're living to your edge, to your potential. And that makes you so attractive to girls, so attractive. That makes you compete with other guys, like with ferocity. When your diet's fucking on point, not just because you wanted to get like, you know, like a little bit more like aesthetic, but because you feel like people rely on you, your future wife relies on you to have a clean diet so that your brain's optimized so that you can make a fuck ton of money for you, her, and your future children. Because that's the kind of life that you want, isn't it? Before we leave, I just want you to really think about your dream life right now. You know, this degeneracy is very attractive, let's be honest, but look, if we're all honest, having that beautiful, beautiful, high quality woman that the moment you met her, when you analyzed her from that literally first conversation, when you knew the facts about her, you wanted to marry her straight away. That kind of woman that when you told your siblings or your parents, they almost thought you were moving too fast, but you just knew straight away because you saw her family, you saw her characteristics, you saw her, her purity, that she hasn't been a hoe, she hasn't slept around. That high quality woman having wonderfully healthy, fit children with her and you being like the fucking man who's working hard as fuck to get them the perfect life where they've got the best health care education houses everything and imagine also having a brotherhood where like you've got other guys who live next to you who have achieved the same thing when you work hard in this competition that is the reward there's so many guys who will bullshit and say like oh well i don't care the juice isn't worth the squeeze bro imagine your child as, a, as like a mini athlete and he's watching you hit PRs on deadlift and he's shouting at you and like, you know, he's like, he's so happy for you to hit a, a PR and you set him up on like a tiny little barbell. He's five years old. He hits like a PR on, on deadlift too and you're hyping him up. That's the reward of this competition. It's not about like the, the cute car or the like the Rolex or some shit. It's not about that. The, the reward of male competition is that you get to reproduce and your, your offspring survive. The, it always has been. People think that's weird to say. It, it just, this is just pure fucking fact in history. The reward of being a hardworking man is that you get to have babies and they will survive because you've chosen a good woman and you have resources to keep yourself safe. That's why we work so fucking hard. So when I see a young man who talks to me and says like, oh, hustle culture this, grind culture this, bro. You don't even need that stuff, bro. All I can think is like, how broken are your, is your testosterone levels and your masculinity that you wouldn't be pushing hard for this to, to be a father and to be a successful, hardworking father who can provide not just like the bare minimum where you can buy a shit house whilst working a shit nine to five job that leaves you sleep deprived but buying an amazing house with land that's completely safe, that's like, you know, off grid or whatever you want. You can go to multiple houses around the world. You've got power and control and safety. You can buy the highest quality foods, things that wouldn't make your, your children or your family sick. That's why we work so fucking hard. So even though the competition is crazy these days, we're gonna make it crazier. 
If you're struggling right now and you really want to go like onto the next level, you know, if you've like felt like you've got more of your potential, but you want to tap into that extra bit of masculine zest, that's why I made the Adonis Protocol. I could have sold it. It's completely for free. It's a step-by-step, -step, like the most powerful self-improvement plan out there, especially for masculine men. It's the top link in the description. It's literally completely for free. I could have sold it for a few hundred dollars. It's like an online course, but I'm just giving it to you for free. Top link, go click that right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.